This is Cody with Liquid Lab Studio. Today we're doing the one year review on the DJI Phantom 4 Pro Drone and the DJI Mavic Pro Drone. So we've been flying these for the year. We can share with you the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, this review hopefully gives you some pointers, teaches you what to do, what not to do. So if you're looking at buying or, or you already own one of these and you want to kind of learn a few things of, that we've picked up, um, this review will kind of go in depth in some of these, some of the differences in these two drones. Today we're going to be doing the one year review for the DJI Phantom 4 Pro drone. Um, this wasn't our first DJI drone, but this was our second. I had purchased the Mavic Pro and almost immediately after having issues with it ran down and got this one. We're an independent studio, we purchase our own drones. So we do not work for DJI nor do they give us products, so we're not endorsed or endorsing them. We're just giving you an honest feedback uh, from our experience. So let's go into some of the good features. Some of the good features are it has actually the larger camera and it does a better job, a better job with compression and codec. So it is a professional drone. You can actually take professional footage. I almost exclusively fly it because when I take a video, I want it to look the best. Another reason I fly this drone is it's actually bulkier and heavier. Um, and it's got a pretty, pretty heavy battery, a decent battery, but it's got a lot of flight time. You can get like up to like 30 minutes with it. Um, don't recommend going and pushing it that far. And with this particular drone, if it gets hit with wind, it actually seems to do a lot better. So there's a lot less shaking in your footage. Yeah, you could do a lot less cuts. You can do more like single shot drone footage. Um, I had one where almost the whole video was just kind of perfect and smooth. And I, I ran it for like nine minutes just to uh, show that you can actually have like smooth straight through pictures. Um, with this drone, it actually has a six-way collision avoidance system. So you have the visual sensors in the front, uh, visual positioning. It'll tell you, you know, how far away from an object you are, and it'll stop um, at a certain distances. And you also have them in the back side over here and on the bottom. And on the sides here, it's they have uh, other sensors to keep it from, from hitting things. So, and on the bottom, you also have your sonar and another set of, of these visual systems. So there's the three sides of those. Um, they're actually a really good feature. Kind of the drawback is when you get too close to objects, um, it kind of freaks out and it won't go. So you have to kind of take it sideways if you want to nudge out of something, or you could disable it. But what's the purpose of having it if it's not protecting your aircraft? So you can kind of learn uh, techniques to get up and out of a, a canopy of trees. We've done that before. The visual sensors in this drone actually have saved it a couple times. I've had it uh, flying and miscalculated the height of a tree and the tree was like over 230 feet high and it, it the app had blacked out and I couldn't tell what's going on so instead of it forcing it to go forward it just sat there at the tree and it was recording it every other tree was um, less than 100 feet so we had to bump it up uh, above that amount to get it to go fast to continue uh, shooting so it actually has uh, p potentially saved the drone you did that with a drone without that kind of system it probably would have hit the tree and you would never seen it again. So another neat thing, um, crashes. I've actually had technically zero crashes with this drone. That's another reason I like to fly it. I get it's bulky and you know, it comes in a big backpack and it's a bit bulky to go with. I would take it everywhere, but it certain countries, this is something people are gonna notice. And so, being that it's it's strong, I've actually ha been able to land this drone off off of cliffs and, and some uh, less than desirable areas, and even take take off from those areas. Um, there was one place I was launching from a cliff. I highly recommend not doing it, but it was in Hawaii, and there's a lot of property rights issues. So I launched it, and the wind was gusting, and it went over, and it was gonna either hit some rocks, tumble off a cliff. So I grabbed it and clobbered it into a bush and kind of pushed it down. And I was able to do that. One of these blades whacked me in the finger. My finger got cut pretty good. Uh, the funny thing was, after I shut it down, the blade was uh, fine. It was in good shape and, and you could still use it to fly. So even with, um, with scratching a few things, like these blades are very robust. Uh, compared to the Mavic Pro where the blades are just super brittle where you can just twist them and break them. I mean, this is flexible I could do that and put it back on and fly so the one technical crash it wasn't even a crash it was so 
what was happening, we were landing on a piece of wood, a piece of driftwood, uh, to get it on the beach. Because when you land something like this on the sand, it throws sand up in it and it kind of, it, it's a mess and this camera here could get scratched. So it was landing on a platform, the drone was coming in and it was lined up in the middle and when it went to land, it shifted itself because it's an auto land and uh, it came down on the edge of the platform. When the blade shut down, it tipped over and touched the sand. Sounds very minor, but actually it ended up being a major issue. It got sand inside one of these motors and we'll have a video probably later on how to, how to fix that. But it got sand in one of these motors and I had to um, find a way to blow it out because you can hear it scratching. And having um, debris in here scratching could break down one of these motors and potentially risk your drone falling out of the sky. No one wants that to happen. So I was able to clean it out and have had successful flights with it. Um, so no real issues there. The one major drawback with this one is this gimbal. Um, typically, you're not going to find a perfectly flat ground. It is always slightly off axis. So if you kind of look at this camera, if it's slightly off axis or there's a little piece of grass there, it's going to turn down into it. And um, so while it's actually calibrating itself, it can scratch that lens and that's not a good thing. So it is kind of a drawback. Um, it also comes with advantage. So one thing I do is I hold it up, I let the camera go through its cycle um, test and then, and then I'll set it down and then I'll let it level off, let the IMU go for its test and then we'll launch it, let it hover, let it get its home lock and go through its test, then we'll fly off. So the camera being able to rotate um, down and, and in this position is actually a really, really great feature uh, for filming overhead. The Mavic doesn't really have that kind of a feature because it can barely turn itself down and it also has its whole body behind it. So you actually really can't see what's below the drone. This one has a wide angle lens and you can really see what's below it. So if you were ever in some sort of an emergency, this drone would be more successful at, at coming down. I had a uh, Mavic Pro get pinned inside some tree branches and it could do nothing but crash. Uh, this one would have been able to kind of pilot through in the auto land feature and it could have uh, easily made its way down with the camera position like this. So that's definitely a plus on this one. And with these blades, I mean, it would have, it could have cut through the little branches even, uh, except for thick ones, of course, but it might have even bounced off and made its way down to the ground safely. So as far as a drone goes, I'm pretty impressed with the Phantom 4 Pro. There are some drawbacks. Some of the drawbacks are it's huge. And it may look not too big, but when you're trying to take this thing out and put these blades on it, it, it takes up like a foot and a half. Um, in diameter like it takes up a lot of space you need a lot of room you know I recommend like a, a 10 foot at least uh, 10 or 15 foot diameter to launch it so it takes a lot more room you can't fly it indoors um, I wouldn't recommend doing that the other ones anyway because if they hit one item they'll crash and, and be broken um, and the really big drawback so they're making quieter drones like the um, some of the new drones are coming out with, like DJI has the Platinum, which is four decibels uh, quieter than the Mavic Pro. And this one sounds like a bus. Like that, that is a, um, a very, one of the biggest parts of it is it's launching it and it sounds like a bus. Like you can literally hear it from a long distance away. So if you're trying to take footage, um, you know, kind of tranquil, passive footage, and you don't want to disturb people or wildlife, uh, this drone could potentially run them off, but you're going to get a really good picture of them. So the pros and the cons. Um, yes, it does sound like a bus. The other ones, they're quieter, but let's kind of go back over the features. So another neat thing about this, um, yes, the controller is huge and bulky. It fits around your neck, but eventually it kind of strains your neck even with the lanyard. Uh, but it does have 5.8 gigahertz signal. So a lot of uh, Wi-Fi routers are... 2.4 gigahertz and most drones are so you get a lot of interference and um, blackouts so with this one you can actually uh, have it in 5.8 gigahertz and be able to cut through or some of those urban areas a lot of Wi-Fi and get a better signal and you know at a higher gigahertz too so it's another neat feature with this one and ultimately the question is you know should you buy it or not um, we got this one in particular because it's a professional version we have the Mavic Pro but the Phantom 4 Pro takes a better picture, and that was the actual 
purpose and intention of a studio is to take uh, more aerial footage uh, in professional uh, 4K formats. So it's a very expensive drone. So if you have discretionary income or if you know what you're getting yourself into, it can hold up. I hope this review helps and helps you, you know, understand at least better or make decisions on which product to buy or not to buy. So this is our review of the Phantom 4 Pro. Please show us some love, like, and subscribe. Thank you. Today we're going to do the one year review on the DJI Mavic Pro drone. We got her here. Uh, so we've been flying this thing for a year and we're going to give you the good, the bad, the ugly. We're not sponsored or endorsed by DJI. We don't get free products from them. So we're going to tell you the truth. Um, nothing, nothing to hold back. Let me tell you some of the good features. Some of the good parts are that the app, when it's working properly, has a lot of cool functions. It'll tell you basically if the wind's too high, um, if your signal's dropping. So you can actually see two different signals. Um, you can see the one for the video feed for your um, heads-up display, your HUD. Um, you can also see the signal for your controller. So uh, you can kind of get that going. Uh, the f kind of a catch we also ran to this drone is these antennas, they actually collapse in on themselves, which is neat for storage. At the same time, it blocks the signal because they bounce off each other and it's doesn't work. So you actually have to every time make sure you extend these. Um, and another neat thing about these antennas is you actually want them facing the drone. So whichever direction it is you want them to be parallel with the drone. So in the controller this drone is a little different. You can actually fly it without the app. Um, it's really neat thought so if you just have it with you you want to get it up in the air and fly it. Uh, it becomes a little challenging because there's not a lot of video feedback. You can't really tell what's going on. You can hit like record and take pictures with it, but you may not actually know what you're taking pictures of. So that would be more of kind of a sporty thing to do. So you turn it into sport mode and you can kind of go enjoy. It's a neat drone for playing around with. You can go up to 40 miles an hour uh, in sport mode and it handles you know surprisingly well. It doesn't flip over like you would expect a, a, something of this lightweight. 
Uh, I have noticed on long distances, it can tend to drift or get picked up by small winds and kind of pushed off course. So it's not as big and powerful as the other drones. And these blades are pretty fragile. Um, having fragile blades means you even touch uh, a twig uh, or, or even a piece of grass could potentially break it if it's thick enough. Uh, and some of the other drones like the Phantom 3s and Phantom 4s have these very thick blades which are robust. That's one of the things I wish they had with this but I understand they have to be lightweight and they have to be collapsible. So there's kind of a give and take with uh, that part. So uh, first of all yes it is a small drone as you probably already know it compacts into a small little case. Little case right here. It compacts into a small little case. Um, it'll fold down on, on all sides. But we're not here to talk about how it folds. We're here to talk about the quality or lack thereof of the product. Um, if you're going to spend this amount of money on a drone, I want you to kind of know what you're getting to. It's a great, it's a neat concept. I mean, a foldable drone that you could take with you with a semi-pro camera. Uh, a lot of like users and and people have been noticing that there is a huge exposure difference. Uh, you're not, it's the codec is over compressing. Uh, it's because it's a smaller camera, smaller drone, and you're just really not getting that quality you would get from like a professional model like DJI Phantom 4 Pro, which we also have. Um, and there's like filters you could put on because there's other issues, there's exposure issues with the lenses. They're either not letting too much light in or, or sometimes too much of the shutter speed. So you can actually put an ND filter on to make that happen. Okay, flight time. They claim it's 27 minutes. Uh, you're lucky to get about probably 22 minutes. Uh, you go any further than that, you risk it auto landing and crashing, which we've had done. <laughs> um, so there's another model which it's basically the same body and everything, different motors. Um, so they increase efficiency so it gets an extra two minutes of flight time. Uh, it's the Platinum version. Um, to be honest, I wasn't too impressed with the Mavic. I it was one of the first to get it, Generation 1 owner, and I really expected a lot more. Um, this was my first semi-pro drone. I immediately went out and bought a, the Phantom 4 Pro. Um, but with this guy, you can uh, pack it down into a backpack and take it with you but it's actually very fragile a lot of these parts just on their own just start cracking off and breaking um, so let's go for the fun let's talk about the fun the fun is if you like repairing things you will have a lot of fun repairing things let's talk about the components here the plastic it's made out of is actually so brittle you can break it with your fingernail um, mine took a small Hit, and there's actually a weak point here it's the shock plate and as you can tell pieces of it when I was working on it trying to copy it a piece fell off and this tiny little part here is supposed to hold the whole gimbal and camera to some rubber bands I think it's a horrible concept um, the engineers kind of really really messed up on this one so what happens it takes a tiny hit um, in my instance it did it on its own during an update shot into a wall fell a few feet and snapped the camera well, the worst part was the the dreaded gimbal overloaded air. That everyone gets it. It's a really nasty air. Uh, there's people that are getting it with the app or just faulty components. This ribbon cable that actually goes around the camera, um, mine severed, but people are having these just break from usage. So I also have the first video on how to repair the gimbal flat ribbon PCB cable. So we also have that available uh, right up here, and. There's some aftermarket, uh, some of these, I highly recommend, or at least after a crash to replace it. And uh, let's go over these. So you have these blades. Um, something interesting about these blades is the circle ones are the ones that always break. So they should really sell just bags of the circle ones, and you probably have plenty of the uh, non-circle ones laying around. So we get lots of little extra components. And the, another fun thing is the plastic is made out of it. They say it's a composite. When I talk to GJI, you can scratch it with your fingernail. I get it's lightweight. At the same time, I mean, you probably don't want something that's just going to fall apart. It's been through a couple crashes. Um, one was during an update. It shot towards the wall. 
Some other minor ones were trying to use the active track feature and I slingshot around into trees. Even though I was in mostly an open field, it happened to find the only trees on the perimeter. So, so about this arm slash leg, um, when it breaks like this, you're going to have to repair it. Uh, it requires you to take the whole drone apart and to solder on these three wires, a new connection. Uh, we also have that repair video, and that's above here. Um, so click on that, learn a little more. Um, another thing is this particular drone, it has two sets of vision position sensors. There's two up here, they're cameras, and there's two down here, along with sonar. So they're supposed to help it um, from, from crashing, and you know, when going forward it can. But I've had instances where obviously the side that's not protected, the sides, rear and upper, can actually get you into trouble. I had it um, auto land into a tree area and it basically had nowhere to go. So yes, those are a neat, neat system. Same time, they're actually light sensitive. You probably shouldn't be flying your drone at dark. Uh, they tell you not to. And these are actual cameras. So cameras actually need light to be able to react and uh, adjust to... Uh, to objects in 3D. So, to be honest, the Platinum wasn't too impressive, the Mavic Pro wasn't too impressive. Great concept, that's why I jumped on the bandwagon, it was one of the first to get it. Um, to be honest, maybe Gen 2 will be better, but there's a lot of quality concerns and I'm wondering if they're built into the product or if the engineers need to watch this video so they can get some good ideas on how to fix it. I've also uh, called them and gave them a few ideas and we've talked about the DJI GO 4 app and it's had some issues. Uh, in particular, uh, some of the first people to have these drones got, got sideswiped. Your question is, probably, should you buy it? Well, if you have discretionary income and you like the concepts of it, you know you know what you're getting to, a little joystick controller. If you, if you know what you're getting, up front and I also have some videos on how not to crash it because it crashed. So if you know what you're getting and you know what to expect then it's not a bad drone. It, it is a, a expensive drone. I, I just would expect more or hope for more maybe like I said model 2 maybe model even 3 is what I should have waited for. Um, so that's that's it. I mean it, it is neat. You can take it with you can travel. It's compact. It's got some neat features. It's got sonar and it, it auto lands it'll self land um, it has two two systems of GPS glosses and GPS uh, two compasses so it's it's a good drone that'll actually return back to you and has 4k capability uh, at the same time there's just a lot of concerns I mean if, uh, you'll go through a lot of blades uh, or just keep it away from anything but the the truth is like what's the point of a vision system if you can't go anywhere near anything because it's going to break. Um, these break with just about anything. One of the drawbacks is this is only a 2.4 gigahertz drone, which means it can get a lot of interference from people's Wi-Fi. Standard Wi-Fi you know, sits around that range. Um, they also have other drones that the controller can actually go with a 5 gigahertz, 5.8 gigahertz range. Um, so that's another difference in these two. I've actually had a crash a minor crash, I had to catch it. Um, a, someone ran a Wi-Fi repeater on an antenna and it basically overloaded every single signal and started sending it ascend and descend codes and it overrode the shutoff codes. So the 2.4 gigahertz range is a flooded signal. Um, I would highly recommend a drone that does not only have the 2.4, you want the 5.8 just to get options in case there's uh, problems with the signal. This is our one year review. I hope this video helps you out in making a decision uh, whether to buy it or not or to compare it to other products. So please show us some love, like, and subscribe. Thank you.